AP History students, and welcome to another session of AP Euroblast. I'm here to strike your interest in European history, activate your memory, draw connections, and get you ready for the exam. In the previous episode, we examined 19th century imperialism and how different it was from imperialism of the 16th to 18th centuries, particularly in the regions that it affected. Access to the riches of Africa and Asia had motivated Columbus and countless other for hundreds of years. But except for the Dutch in Indonesia, Europeans were unable to dominate Asians and Africans in the same way that they dominated American peoples and even empires. The Portuguese, Dutch, and English all established coastal trading posts in Africa and around the Indian Ocean, but their success depended on the willingness of local rulers to do business with them. Powerful empires in West Africa and India had gunpowder, steel, and horses. These advantages, along with resistance to European disease, made them formidable opponents and prevented any Cortes-like conquest from happening there. This all changed in the second half of the 19th century with the Second Industrial Revolution. Why was it a second and what happened to the first, you might ask? Good questions. The textile factories, coal mines, and steam power of the first half of the 19th century continued in the second. But a whole host of new technologies increased industrialization's production and its variety after 1860. And these were all strongly linked to imperialism. Here again is Cecil Rhodes standing on Africa. This popular cartoon is a visual reminder of the 19th century symbiosis of imperialism and industrialization. Industrialization made 19th century imperialism possible, and imperialism nourished industrialization's continued growth. The telegraph wire he holds shows the growing importance of electricity, harnessed on a mass scale for the first time. Most likely, the wire would have been made from copper mined in Africa or the United States. Rubber from the Belgian Congo or Brazil or British-controlled Malaysia would have wrapped it for insulation. And clearly, the improved communication of the telegraph allowed countries like Britain to dominate large regions of Africa and Asia economically, militarily, and politically. Here are the big ideas, what the College Board calls key concepts that we are going to examine. The second industrialization expanded globally between 1870 and 1914, but also became more complex and increased in scale. The second industrialization facilitated European control of global empires. And here are the breakthroughs that made up the second industrial revolution of the late 19th century. New technologies, new forms of communication and transportation, new weapons, and breakthroughs in medicine. Let's look at each. New technologies included the Besmer process, vulcanization, chemicals, machine tools, and electricity. The Besmer process produced stronger and cheaper steel. This led to more extensive and better railroad building that could now rely on affordable steel rather than iron. Shipbuilding expanded for the same reason. Vulcanization was another industrial process. By using sulfur and heat, sticky, gooey latex could be turned into hardened rubber that was used for bicycle tires, leading to the expansion of a new leisure time activity on a new mass-produced good, the bicycle. The rapid expansion of telegraph lines around the world, including across the Atlantic Ocean, further fueled the demand for rubber from the Congo and other regions. Chemicals were also used to make synthetic dyes. Colorful textiles could now be produced cheaply, and the working class could now afford clothes that were not the traditional drab-colored ones of the past. Army uniforms became cheaper as well. Machine tools like these lathes made possible the production of standardized screws, nuts, and bolts. Because they were standardized, they could be used as interchangeable parts in building a wide variety of other goods. The humble screw shown at the middle is something we take for granted, and we know that we can find the exact same one at any number of stores across the United States and throughout the world. But think how hard it is to make grooves with exactly the same width, depth, spacing, and angle, which is why they had never been standardized before. The machine tools used to make these interchangeable parts needed to cut and bore holes with great precision, requiring a substance that was very hard, namely diamonds. And Cecil Rhodes was there to supply them from South Africa, where he held a virtual monopoly on the world supply. Electricity was not a new discovery. Ben Franklin and others had done experiments with it back in the 18th century, but it was a novelty item then. Electromagneticism, however, was a new discovery. It brought electricity together with light and magnetism, making electric lighting possible in cities 
and in factories. The workday as well as leisure activities can be greatly extended. The electric powered assembly line contributed even further to changes in work life and to the growth of factories such as this one to generate the supply of electricity to major cities. Electricity even facilitated the cheap production of electrochemicals such as aluminum, chlorine, sodium, hydroxide, and magnesium. These same technologies made huge advances possible in communication and transportation. Communication first. Here we can see all the major telegraph lines around the world that existed in 1891, making the world smaller and more connected. Already in 1858, North America and Europe were connected by telegraph lines under the Atlantic Ocean. Communication of information that previously took 10 days now took only a few minutes. This was a radical change with huge consequences. The telegraph and then telephones made the reach of international business and imperial government longer than ever before. And now for transportation. Electricity changed transportation within cities, as we can see from the streetcar, both in Europe and in European colonies in Africa and Asia. Transportation between cities used an older technology, steam-powered trains. But the advent of cheaper steel, because of the Bessemer process, greatly increased the networks of railroads. In colonies, they could be used to move armies more quickly than ever before. They also connected ports to mines and plantations, and thereby connected colonies to European capitals as well. New steamships and other technologies propelled ships across oceans more quickly. On smaller vessels, they enabled extensive upriver navigation deep into the heart of Africa for the first time, many times in places where railroads could not be built. Machine tools also made possible new advances in weaponry. Breech-loading rifles, such as the one Rhodes had on his shoulder, and seen again here, could be reloaded and fired much more quickly than traditional rifles. Think of the American Civil War. Those rifles had loaded through the muzzle. The minia ball, with its tapered shape and grooved sides, was a much more accurate and therefore deadly bullet than previous ones. Finally, the Maxim gun, an early machine gun, gave Europeans an overwhelming advantage over Africans and Asians. This included adventurous travelers and businessmen, as well as armies. Popular and prolific writer Hilaire Belloc expressed this in The Modern Traveler, where one fictional character tells another, Whatever happens, we have got the Maxim gun, and they have not. At the same time, new advances in medicine also occurred. Louis Pasteur's development of germ theory was a huge breakthrough in understanding infectious disease. Joseph Lister's invention of antiseptics to kill topical pathogens made life safer in Europe and around the world. One advance in medicine that helped the cause of empire in particular was quinine, made from the bark of this South American plant shown to the left. Knowledge of its medicinal effect was not new. The Inca had already discovered that well before the arrival of the Spanish, and Europeans had used it to treat malaria patients in the 17th century. What was new was that in the 19th century, quinine could now be mass-produced for the first time. It did not cure malaria, a deadly tropical disease, but it did improve the survival chances of Europeans. No longer was Africa a white man's grave as it had always been. The breakthroughs of the Second Industrial Revolution were all-encompassing. New technologies drastically increased the volume and the variety of goods that could be produced and permanently changed how Europeans work. New forms of communication and transportation connected cities, countries, and regions around the world more quickly than ever before. New weapons revolutionized the use of deadly force. And finally, breakthroughs in medicine enabled those who had them to survive more often and in more places. Together, they led to lasting impacts for Europeans, Africans, and Asians alike in ways that they could never have imagined. And the different ways that colonized peoples as well as Europeans responded to these changes is the subject of our next several presentations. Please leave your comments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and keep learning. Thank you for watching. It's been a blast.